Hi guys, Max here, and this is of course your daily market update for yesterday, the 4th of August. And as you can see from the heat map behind me here, it wasn't brilliant and actually stocks did fall on the whole, but it really wasn't a massively volatile day at all. The only sector that really did quite poorly was, as you can see here, uh, energy stocks down by 4 to 3% for the most part because oil prices fell once more for the day. The S&P 500 then really didn't change much for the day and closed pretty much exactly where it opened. The Nasdaq rose very slightly by 0.3% and the Dow Jones fell very slightly by 0.3% too. Across the rest of the world, it was a fair bit better actually and actually quite strong for the most part. The Americas were quite strong, Europe was okay for the most part, the FTSE 100 was up by 0.1% and the stock 600 up by 0.2%. So on the whole, the MSCI World Index rose by 0.9%. The dollar fell in value very slightly against an index of its peer, but really not by a major amount. The euro is still sitting at $1.02, the pound is still sitting at $1.22, but the yen did actually rise and is back up to 133 yen per dollar. In the world of fixed income assets and the bond markets, well, we saw yields fall for the most part. The US 10-year treasury yield fell by 5 basis points down to 2.66%. The German and British 10-year yields fell by a few basis points each as well as people moved into bond markets. Over in commodities then, well, WTI crude oil fell, as I said, by about 2.6% and it's down to $88 a barrel. Brent crude oil is sitting at $94 a barrel, which means that these uh, oil metrics are now at their lowest points in about six months since before we saw the invasion of Ukraine by Russia, which is really nice to see. Gold prices rose by about 2% and they're up to above $1,800 again, uh, sitting at about $1,810 an ounce, so gold investors will be happy there. Finally then, what happened over in the crypto market? Well, as you can see, it was okay and decent, but nothing stellar either. Bitcoin sitting just above $23,000, Ethereum sitting above $1,600, both up by a couple percent for the day, and most other altcoins saw that same sort of price action. Now we did actually get some major news regarding cryptocurrency and it comes from Coinbase, the uh, second largest crypto exchange in the world and they saw an insane pump of their share price as a result of this news. Now their share price has risen by 80% over the last few days at its peaks. Uh, at the moment it's actually up about 45% because it did then come down a bit. And no, this isn't about their earnings report because that isn't out for a few more days, I believe on Monday. So why is Coinbase booming? Well, we've seen news come out about Coinbase and BlackRock coming together to sign a deal to bring uh, crypto investing to BlackRock's institutional companies. It basically just allows BlackRock's current uh, customers and their current assets to trade with Bitcoin at first, and then they're going to move on to other cryptocurrencies in the future too. This is actually quite a major development and a big win for Coinbase, or at least it should be a big win. BlackRock is the largest asset management firm in the world. Right now, they hold something like $8 trillion in assets under management. This is an example of cryptocurrency and decentralized finance in general becoming more mainstream. And so these kind of deals should be expected to get more frequent as we move forward. But this is still good news for Coinbase. The problem with all of this, though, because of course there is a problem, how much revenue will Coinbase derive from this deal? How many customers will they gain? Will their costs increase? Will this be a profitable endeavor for them? No one knows a single thing about this deal and no one knows whether or not this deal will be valuable or how valuable it will be. Now that obviously presents a problem because how are you then supposed to price this information? And the answer is you just assume it's very bullish and you buy and you buy and you buy. And as a result, Coinbase's share price has risen by 45% from where it was a few days ago to where it is right now after this news came out, which is insane and entirely based on speculation. I do also hate to have to mention this, but a lot of people seem to think that the uh, end of Coinbase is over and that it's now a good performing stock, when in reality, it just isn't. Coinbase's share price is still down by about 70% from a year ago today, which is an awful performance. And I also hate to remind you, but if your stock loses 90% and then gains 90%, you're not break even, you're not sitting at 0% gains or losses, you're sitting at 81% losses. Now, we mentioned in passing over the last few days that the Bank of England was going to be announcing their decision for interest rate hikes, and they came out and gave it, and they gave a 50 basis point rate hike, which was pretty much exactly what we all expected, meaning that interest rates in the UK are now sitting at 1.75%, which is better than it was last month, but there still needs more to be done. Now, the Bank of England are also expecting inflation in the UK to hit 13% over the next few months, which is absolutely insane. And they're also predicting the recession 
to last for five consecutive quarters. So five consecutive quarters of negative GDP growth, which again is a really tough thing for a lot of people to stomach. In particular, the Bank of England literally used the words catastrophic stagflation. And so that's sending a whole load of fears around the markets. But there is one good thing about this. The Bank of England isn't being like the Federal Reserve and uh, supporting this political agenda and claiming that no recession is coming at all. They are at least being realistic. They're also trying to regain their credibility because they've lost it over recent months from being too dovish back then. And they're really not too hawkish uh, these days either. So they're trying to put out this idea that they are very fiscally responsible and that they won't let inflation spiral out of control. Now, this decision has been very controversial to hike interest rates by 50 basis points here in the UK. Uh, of course, energy prices are the driving force behind inflation right now, but inflation existed a long time before we saw uh, Russia invade Ukraine, and so that can't be blamed entirely. There is this incredibly dangerous narrative being pushed in the UK, mostly by uh, very left-leaning people, and uh, this person here, Richard Murphy, is a perfect example of this. He says that the Bank of England is going to increase its interest rates today. It may be 0.25%. It could be by 0.5%. In the end, it was by 0.5%. But the question is, why are they choosing to increase the price of money when we already have an inflation problem? This guy basically believes that interest rate rises are stupid because they don't cause inflation to fall. And he calls this conventional economic theory, when in reality, it's just simple truth and fact. This guy wanted more money printing at every possible opportunity over the last few years. And now he's trying to gaslight everyone into thinking that inflation isn't real and it isn't bad and there's nothing we can do about it. This is just one of the very common silly ideas that a lot of people are pushing these days and they really are very, very dangerous because they're the reason we're in this mess in the first place today. Of course, a similar idea that a lot of people push that isn't quite as dangerous but is still rather silly in my opinion is the idea that we shouldn't be trying to impact interest rates because that impacts demand and this is a supply side driven inflation crisis but these people just conveniently ignore the fact that prices are a function of both supply and demand never one in its entirety and we only have the ability to impact demand today so if we want to bring inflation down which we should because without it the economy will crash all on its own then we have to impact demand now we got a little bit of corporate earnings out today uh, firstly from zillow who are quite an important company because they're a little bit of a bellwether regarding the housing market in the united states and then we have just a touch from lyft and doordash who are both uh, quite exciting tech companies to a few people so Zillow then, well, they missed their earnings estimates and their share price has fallen by 7% in after hours trading as a result of that. The really big news though is that they put out a very poor forecast for the future. They're predicting just $18 million in earnings over the next quarter and they were expected to predict $170 million. So that is a massive miss. Now, why do they think that their next quarter will be really poor for their business? Well, they do operate partially on ads, but also they're very uh, integrated into the housing market in the US. And they're basically predicting a housing market downturn with fewer homes sold and lower prices on the whole. This is very bad news for Zillow, but it's also very bad news for the housing market too. And so it's a very important thing to pay attention to. Now, DoorDash and Lyft actually posted quite good earnings. And so DoorDash's shares are up by 13% after hours and Lyft's are up by 9%. They both grew their revenues, they grew their users, and they did better than expected for the most part. But again, both of those companies warned about tough economic conditions over the next quarter and for the rest of 2022. And they're unsure how this will affect their business going forward. They're not quite in panic mode about it yet, but they are ready to get on that train when the time comes. And that's another thing to be wary of. Next, we have a major piece of news coming out from Facebook or Meta, and they've just announced this $10 billion bond deal, which was just like Apple's bond deal that they announced uh, just last week, capitalizing on the cheap debt that's going around in the economy right now. Now, this raised cash will be used for stock buybacks, so basically just to increase the share price for their shareholders and for capital expenditures for Facebook as well. And it's a perfect example of the biggest problem with the markets right now. When asset prices rise, equities and bond prices that is, inflation rises with it and this previous six week rally that we've seen so far will only cause more inflation and so it will be its own downfall. Now, how does this principle work? Well, as investors convince themselves that inflation is over, which is what they've done over the last month, they buy into stocks and they buy into bonds. And so they cause a rally in prices of those assets. Yields fall on those bonds as well as inflation expectations are falling. And so debt is now cheaper and it's easier and cheaper to acquire new capital. Companies like Facebook and Apple then and any other company looking to go public or to raise capital at all 
well, they want to grow and they want cheap capital to do it. And with equity prices higher, they can now release new shares for cheaper levels. And with bond yields low, they can gain new capital by releasing bonds for cheaper yields as well. And now they can go out and invest more in that company's growth in the future, which is good for the company. It's good for the economy in GDP terms, but that's awful for inflation because it's the polar opposite of what we want right now. We don't want investment. We want people to save their money and stop spending to bring inflation down. That's why in the long run, this equity and this bond market rally will cause its own downfall because it's all predicated on inflation falling. But the fact that these asset prices are rising in the first place will then cause more inflation in the future. Finally, then for the day, we have just a little bit of news uh, regarding geopolitics and general things. Uh, China is, of course, still terribly angry at Pelosi and the United States for sending her over to Taiwan. And they've come out with a couple more responses to try and make it clear that they don't want this to happen again. Pelosi has now been sanctioned by China and they came out and called her vicious and provocative. I don't really know what the sanctions are right now. Details of that are not yet public, but in reality, it really isn't too important. They won't impact Pelosi at all. She's not going to go and live in China or go on holiday there or anything. So this is mostly just posturing. We also had news over the last day of China firing a bunch of missiles over the sea towards Taiwan and Japan. Uh, again, this is really just posturing. They're not uh, trialing any new tech. They're not showing off brand new missiles that are going to scare the rest of the militaries around the world. They're basically just telling the West that they aren't happy with what happened. And so they're going to make that damn well known. Finally, then the last thing for today is uh, the monkeypox uh, epidemic, if you want to call it that, but it's now been declared an emergency in the United States. Uh, supposedly, this makes it easier to access funds to try and stop the spread, but it will also, in the long run, make it easier for the government to uh, use restrictions to restrict the spread as well, if that's the direction they want to go down. Now, there are loads of theories about this. Uh, many people think it's some deep state operation, or it's COVID Mark II, and it's going to be used to lock the world down again. I don't think it's going that direction. I don't think it's that major at all. I think this is just legacy media fear-mongering about the new virus, and this isn't actually something we need to worry about. If you enjoyed this video, then make sure to like, comment, and subscribe to bless the YouTube algorithm. It really does help. If you want to join our exclusive community, then check out our Patreon. You get access to our Discord server and extra content like access to my portfolio and buy and sell alerts for all my own investments. Also, make sure to check out the link in the description to Masterworks. It can help you protect your portfolio against market turmoil through fractional shares of art from world-famous artists. Art has historically proven to be uncorrelated to the markets, so it's a really valuable resource with the markets falling every week. There's also a link in the description to iTrust Capital, which helps you to invest in crypto through your tax-advantaged IRA, which could literally save you thousands. If you, like me, think crypto going down is a buying opportunity, then now is the perfect time to join iTrust Capital. Thank you all for watching. Stay stoic. Until next time.